Once you've repeated the movement for five or 10 minutes and you know you can do it mechanically correct, after that we have to start adding some level of resistance, it has to be alive. That's the funnest part of training. But if you just do the technique for five or 10 minutes and then it's like, okay, let's roll, then you just go back to what you normally do when you roll, which is how a lot of people train. The most important part is the part that got skipped is the drilling part in the I-method, the isolation stage. That should be the majority of the time spent during a class. So you work the technique for five or 10 minutes, you can do it mechanically correct, and now for the next 40 minutes, we're gonna do rounds. One side, try and punch, one side, defend, and then roll you know, for five or 10 minutes after that. But that's how you really start to develop the skill and, and, and spend time here. So adaptive resistance, if Ray's clobbering Travis, he's gotta dial it back down so that Travis is learning something from it. If Travis is successful all the time, he's gonna dial it up. Okay, and we'll just watch and see what happens. And then, you know, 90% of the time, most all of us, myself included, tend to make similar mistakes from positions like this, which we can learn from. Okay, go ahead. From Start there, and then Ray's going to stay mounted and try and touch your head with the gloves. Yeah, you can climb if he gives it to you. Okay. And then uh, you're going to try and escape, but upa only. Upa only. I don't want to see any elbow knee escapes. Very nice. Right back to it. I don't want to spend 10 minutes of video showing you that, but just give you an idea of how you should drill. So find a training partner you like working with and set the timer for long rounds. That, that round should be at least five minutes. There's no point for like two or three minutes. It takes sometimes three or four minutes to figure out what the other person's doing. So you got to let your body have time to adapt. I like five or 10 minute rounds per side. So slow it down if you have to, so you can do a longer round and that way you can start to problem solve during the round. And the thing you notice there, the monkey paw works good. Um, it's hard to climb, it's harder to climb than it, it looks on film when they're connected to your hips. And so the, the real secret to making that technique work is the fact that you gotta keep hip connection with them the whole time. So Travis is keeping his hips up the whole time, staying connected to Ray, that means he can affect Ray's base, you know, instantly within a, a millisecond. And that's what makes this, this work. If you get lazy and you drop your hips back flat to the mat, all, it's not going to work out well. So you got to maintain that connection and you got to spend time doing it. Welcome to my Mount Escape video. I'll tell you a little bit about this series, how it came into play. Every year, those people who are students of SBG or, or uh, people who take my classes know, I teach one topic per year at all my seminars. And so I'll, I'll just go back and dive into a particular topic to review what I think are the most fundamental things from that position or place or game, uh, rearrange it and come up with a curriculum that I'm really happy with that revolves around fundamentals, not what's most basic, but what's most important. And then I teach it over and over and over again, different groups all over the world. And I make all kinds of changes every time to try and make it better. And by the time December comes around, I've taught that same class probably 24 times all over the world and I'm pretty comfortable with the information but also I'm comfortable with what people struggle with, what people find easier, the kinds of questions I got asked most often and that's when I come in in December and lay it on tape here or in video uh, for you guys for SPGU and for students who follow what we do. 